We're here today with New York Times bestselling author Lisa Jackson. And Lisa, you have a brand new hardcover bestseller, I'm hoping, coming out uh, March 31st. It's I'm hoping too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. Now tell us, this is the sequel to your uh, Lost Souls last yes. year and part of the New Orleans uh, series. And we're start. who's our characters in this one? Well, it's Rick Benz, who oh, yes. his, yeah, he's a very popular <laughs> character. Yeah. And uh, we left him in a poor situation at the end of Lost Souls, so we're bringing bad him back. Didn't yeah, he bad get hit by lightning or something? I or think a, tr a, a, a tree. tree came down on, on his back. I remember and that. We didn't know if he was going to live or die because his daughter can see people if they're going to die. Anyway, so uh, I guess we're giving away a little bit here, but the star story opens with him, and the premise of the story is that now he thinks he can see things, and what he sees when he wakes up from this coma he's been in is his ex-wife, and he's or dead ex-wife, and he's convinced that she's alive. And during the course of the story, it's kind of a is she or isn't she, he sees her, she haunts him, she gaslights him, and uh, it fills in the gaps of what happened to Rick Benz way back when, and of course his current marriage is kind of in trouble because of this, so it's it was a lot of fun to write. I hope that the readers like it. Oh, it sounds wonderful. So uh, Olivia then is part of the story, but Absolutely. she's very secondary with uh, uh, she's Jennifer. With Jennifer Benz, she starts, Olivia starts in the background. They, they're having a few marital problems, but those all come to the fore, so mm -hmm. she's very much a part of the story. I think my fans would kill me if, if she wasn't. <laughs> I can't wait to read it. It sounds wonderful. Well, I have to tell you, I just finished Wicked Game. Oh, great. And you co-authored this with your sister, That's Nancy correct. Bush. Mm -hmm. And, uh, oh, in fact, here it is. So we should uh, whoops, show that around. And um, that was just an excellent story. This was fun to write because I got to write with my sister, uh, Nancy Bush, only other book that we've written together was the first book we ever wrote in 1983 that never saw, uh, that never was published. It saw uh, editors all right, and uh, they weren't <laughs> that crazy about it. And so I guess really burned us because we never had written together again. And so we started, uh, uh, we were asked to do this, and this book is set in the um, St. Elizabeth campus, which I had used in Oregon in uh, Most Likely to Die with another couple of authors, Beverly Barton and Wendy Corsi Staub. So I said, can we do the book there? And uh, my editor, John Sconemilio, said yes. And boy, Nancy took off and we ran. And we didn't always agree on the story, but uh, we actually have several books planned. And it's all around the colony, uh, which is a little bit of, has a little bit of paranormal in it. And I, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. You do. You you're doing more with the psychics or the visions uh, sort of thing. The, the, your characters are are, are seeing uh, the they're, dead. <laughs> they're seeing the dead or ghosts or whatever. Yeah, yeah, you know, I'm lucky because my editor lets me write the kind of books I like to read, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm not a particularly uh, superstitious person, or I'm not a particularly maybe even um, have a, have a great, great faith or, or understand the beyond, but I like to be scared and I like that creepy stuff. So it's so much fun to write it. I'm, I'm pretty, pretty darn lucky. So is it hard to pull a book together like that, uh, co-authoring? I, I just wonder, with your sister it's probably easier because you probably are more on the same wavelength of writing style we, and It was more so intense forth. with Nancy. Yeah. It was more like, we wrote the same book. There yeah. wasn't, you write this, I write this, you write okay. that. Okay. We wrote the same book. And so your that was voice is melded. I mean, your writing voices. You couldn't, I could, because I purposely was looking for it. Okay, good, good, good. Well, I'm glad to hear that. A difference, and there is none. I mean, it totally, it works wonderfully. Well, the way we did it this time, Nancy wrote it, I overwrote it, Nancy overwrote it again. Oh, my God. So it got written many, many times, and then I read the copy edit, or she read the copy edit. So, yeah, we wanted it to be one voice, and um, she's still alive. I haven't killed her. <laughs> I mean, we didn't have too many... Um, Disagreements. We wrote this whole backstory, which is only uh, briefly touched on in this book, and we'll be we're writing another one that takes off at the, where this one leaves off. That will come out in 2011. Whoa! I think. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Great. Yeah. Okay. So you have to tell us a little bit about the Bankster. 
Now you were saying that's Nancy's dog, but you Nancy's know, dog. every email I get from you alerting of the new book that's coming out, well maybe not yours, maybe it's more Nancy's, but we always hear about the Binkster, so I thought readers would get a kick out of hearing about him. The Binkster, her. The Binkster her. is Ooh, a girl. God, oh. shame on me. <laughs> the Binkster is my sister's real life pug. The story behind the dog is that when Nancy was writing the Jane Kelly mystery series, mm -hmm. the first book was Candy Apple Red, in which the dog is introduced, the Binkster, who is a pug. Nancy and Ken, her husband, had always owned cats, no dogs. Nancy was so intrigued with this dog that she told Ken, I'm going to go get a pug. And he said, Nancy, just because you write about a dog, that's not going to be what you get. Mm -hmm. And uh, she ignored him. And she went out with friend Sandra and picked up this puppy. And poor Ken, his heart melted. Yeah. And then Nancy took yeah. off for uh, two years off and on writing for soap operas um, and leaving the Bingster with uh, Ken. And they named the dog the Bingster because Nancy had seen this cartoon, a Gary Larson cartoon, long before where uh, you see a black dog jumping out of a window of an apartment building. And it said, upon learning the Petersons had named him the Bingster, the Doberman leaps to his death. So that's how we caught the Bingster, and that the Bingster became a primary character in the Jane Kelly mystery store, uh, series, Candy Apple Red and Electric Blue and Ultraviolet so far. And, uh, but we do have a real Bingster, and she, she is a lot like the dog in the book. She's just docile and sweet and, and funny. You love her. She, she's, I, ha I hate to admit this because I'm kind of a person that likes uh, mutts, dogs. I have rescue dogs, but... Uh, Oh, yeah. I did go out and get a pug. Oh, well, you on, did? Based yeah. on the Bingster. Uh -huh. uh, we named her Jack Bauer, <laughs> and uh, B-O-W-E-R, and uh, her name quickly evolved into Jackie Oh No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so she's not quite like the Bingster, but that's where the Bingster came from. Oh, okay. You know, your books really kind of transcend the genre as well. You definitely have romantic in interests and elements throughout your books. But you have such strong plots and suspense storylines that I think readers that wouldn't necessarily pick up a romance book, you know, they're, they're probably, they probably would label themselves as mystery or suspense readers. They would definitely enjoy uh, and be voracious over your stories. I think you do a phenomenal job. I start out in romance, and I always put a little suspense in my books, even when they, I wasn't supposed to because I like suspense and I really wasn't a, when I started writing romance I wasn't a romance reader but the more I got into the genre and then when I got to break out I always like to keep romance in I just think it adds an edge to the suspense and the suspense polishes the romance I, it, they're ha they work hand in hand yeah. for me so well I mean the, you do it so well yeah well thank you you were talking that you you like books that have a lot of uh, suspense and yes. and uh, paranormal kinds of elements mm. so who are some of your favorite authors then well right now um, I'll read anything Harlan Coben pens I love what he does yeah I Tell no, no, tell yeah. no one. Did you read that? I read. Yeah. Yes, I can't keep the titles. <laughs> yes, but but I, the I love book. It. The pink yeah, book. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. I, that was a great book, and and I just love anything he writes. I'm reading Greg Isles. I'm reading. I read Marley and Me. I love that. I love Dan Brown, uh, Sandra Brown. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. A lot of uh, in the past, I did Stephen King and uh, Daphne du Maurier. Oh, so you really read a, a wide array of authors. Then you like to. I mean, definitely suspense and, and scary, but you, you really run the gamut. Yeah, well, you know, if a book is on the list or popular for a long period of time, I want to know. And one of the, my most favorite books recently has been um, uh, Marley and Me, yeah. where I cried. It was wonderful. Did and you see the movie? I haven't seen the movie. Oh. I can't believe the movie can be as good as the book, but I'm yeah, going to go see I the know, movie. I know. And um, I read uh, The Kite Runner. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Someday when I grow up, I can write like that. I oh, mean, he, he really boys. was. And that was a book, oh, do I really want to read about Afghanistan? And, oh, I don't think <laughs> It was fabulous. You and many other you know, readers probably were thinking the same thing. But yeah, that's, that's been a tremendous book as well and a New York Times bestseller. But I have to ask you, being a New York Times bestseller, what was your first book? Do you remember? The first book that was on the print list as it was then was um, Cold-Blooded, which is Okay, the yeah. second book of the whole Rick Benz yep. that is yep. culminates in Malice. Yep. Um, yep. 
Hot Blooded was the first book in it of the series, and it was on the extended list. And then when Cold Blooded came out, it hit the print list, which was a big deal, and it's gratifying, and it's still one of my favorite books today. I, I had thought about that book a long years before it was actually written, so yeah. that was great. One of our readers in the stores, um, she had asked, if I ever see Lisa, I have to ask her this question. What is the sequel to Left to Die? The sequel to Left to Die is Chosen to Die. It'll be out in August oh. of 2009 this year. Oh, okay. Great. And uh, it takes up where the book leaves off. And I had a lot of questions about that because though one story was complete, one story arc wasn't finished. And um, uh, I got a lot of <laughs> <laughs> grief about that. I didn't, I didn't really realize what I was doing. But um, the book is in production now, and it's a lot of fun. And it has all the same quirky characters set in Grizzly Falls, Montana, as okay. Left to Die. And Left to Die, I think, was very popular. So I, I'm, I'm having a lot of fun. I'm just finishing it now. And uh, as we tape this, and uh, got to say, love Grizzly Falls. <laughs> Shall we sign off with a sig secret signal? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs>